tell by our uh, by our spread here. You see, we're going to have chicken, hash brown potatoes, but uh, we're for it all the way. Right on. We know how to eat right. Do a little party. Why don't you guys come on down and have a little sausage with us? Only at Chicago Tailgate Park will you find this barbecue grill. Only in here in Chicago. Chicago Bear. All right, we're here. We're ready. Wouldn't miss this for the world. 55 years here. One, two, three, four. A new season. Sometimes it ends with toasts and ticker tape. Sometimes it ends with tears and torn up tickets. But every season begins the same way with high hopes and big dreams. In 1996, the Chicago Bears hoped to build on back-to-back -back winning seasons. Instead, they were put to the test. They played hard, but they died hard. They endured many hardships, and throughout it all, many of the bruised and battered played on spurred on from the sideline by those who couldn't. Come on, play! They finished off every play in a hard-fought 7-9 and nine season. for the Bears is their 111th straight sellout, an NFL record 600th franchise win, and a new season full of big play. Just a ball and catch, demonstrating some real power. Still on his feet, can't bring him down. Steps up, he's hit it, sacked again. Nobody's going to stop him. He's going all the way. There is no tougher challenge than starting the season under the white-hot lights of Monday Night Football against the NFL's reigning champions. But on this night, the bravado of America's team was no match for some old-fashioned American ingenuity. Hand off on the reverse, setting up on the right side, looking to throw. Conway, he's a deep down the left side. He's got the ball. He came back for the ball, made the catch of the end zone. Now we're running out of punt formation. He's been brilliant tonight. Gets the snap. Now a fake. He throws the middle. Right out here. At the 50. To the 40. Cutting right to the 30. Cutting left to the 20. He's up and across the 15. Down he goes. The gadgets are working big time tonight. You know, when you talk about the Dallas Cowboys, this is an awesome a collection of talent, but they can be beat. I think the secret is turnovers. We get three turnovers tonight. We got a great chance of upsetting them and going 1-0 and and controlling the center. Third down and about five. Aikman back to throw. Hit as he looks to throw. This ball pops into the air and it's recovered in the end zone by Spurs. Recovered by the touchdown. Chicago dominated from start to finish, and fans were starstruck long after Dallas had limped home. It was the win former Cowboy coach Dave Wanstead had pointed to from summer camp. But instead of serving as a springboard, the victory cast them in a dark shadow.
The Bears lost their next three games. Beating Dallas became a distant memory. Lost was quarterback Eric Kramer and his 29 touchdown passes and nearly 4,000 yards from the year before. In all, Chicago lost 144 games to injuries, including 67 by starters. They stood at the fork in the road. Curl up and play not to lose, or open up and play to win. Attitude on three. One, two, three. Attitude. The Bears reached deep into their heart and the playbook. They made use of every rookie and found new uses for veterans. A stick in the dirt was employed as often as chalk on the board to devise sneak attacks on a field of schemes. To the 40, to the 30, to the 17 different players caught a pass and another six threw one, including rocket punter turned pocket passer Todd Sauerbrunn. No team in the league converted more fourth down gambles and no team confused their own announcers more often. Sometimes they sneaked it in. Sometimes they were even sneakier. Now fakes the sneak, dumps it off left side. He's got Ingram at the 10 to the 5 to the end zone. Touchdown! Yeah! Touchdown, Chicago! They were resilient. They were resourceful. And they were ready to reawaken after three defeats. Turn this thing around, baby. Turn it around now. Let's go. The renegade Raiders would be a stern test. Chicago fought the good fight, as did new starter and old hand Dave Craig. But Oakland built a lead, and it looked grim for the Monsters midway through the third quarter. But just when things looked their darkest, the Bears shined their brightest. Back to throw Dave Craig. Craig pops the right side, and a Beautiful timing throw by Dave Craig. Come on, let's go, let's go! Turnover! The defense created an avalanche of turnovers, and rookie Michael Hicks' hard-nosed sweep set up a field goal as the Bears roared back against the Raiders and the clock. Another interception, another field goal. Still, Chicago trailed by one. We gotta choke them out while we got them down, man. They ain't got no confidence and nothing they doing. We gotta keep them up. We gotta go up we right gotta there. keep them down. None wanted to win more than the defense, which forced a must have three and out. For 38-year-old sub Dave Craig, who launched the decisive 13-play final drive. Come on, no! Or Rashan Salam, who was playing hurt. No one, that is, except kicker Jeff Jager, who was cut by the Raiders. For the ball game. Crowd rises to its feet. Here's the snap. Placement made. The kick to the upright. Papa Bear would have certainly put his stamp of approval on the 96 Bears defense. A unit that loved a good hard lick. You got to swing that ball, baby. Let's turn our ears back, get to the quarterback, baby. Turn your ears back, get to the quarterback, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get to the quarterback now. 
The charge was led by defensive end Alonzo Spellman, who led the team with eight sacks. With Chris Zorich lost for the season, Carl Simpson stepped in and stepped up. Jim Flanagan was blue collar tough, finishing second in sacks while steady Al Fontenot turned in a pair of forced fumbles and a pair of sacks. Rookie Paul Grassmanis, number 93, and John Theory were ever ready reinforcements, rotated in to stir things up and keep the line fresh. What the front four flushed out, the linebackers finished off. Vincent Smith manned the strong side. Brian Cox was strong inside. And Joe Kane made the weak side a strength. Bob Slowick's defense allowed 35 fewer yards per game than the year before. Barry Minter and Sean Harris were two reasons why. Hitman Brian Cox was brought in to cause mayhem, and he did just that with three fumble recoveries and three sacks, despite missing seven games. While Cox is an established star, safety Marty Carter is quickly becoming one. For the second straight year, he led the team in tackles. His 338 are the highest two-season total in Bear history. And for good measure, Carter picked off a career-high three passes. Underneath, the Bears called on John Mangum, Anthony Marshall, Kevin Minifield, and James Burton. And when teams went deep, veteran Mark Carrier was there a stride ahead. Number 27, Walt Harris, was everywhere else. Harris became their first defensive rookie to start in six years, and he made everyone's all-rookie team. Harris gave the Bears a glimpse of a bright future to come, as he was often tested, but rarely beaten. The pass defense rose dramatically from 27th to 11th. Paced by Donnell Wolford's team-leading six interceptions and his first career touchdown. In the pocket, wings it over. Yeah. The defense played a vital role in back-to-back -back wins over division rivals, starting up in the Metrodome on Monday night. Here's the snap right on the yeah. line. The Vikings ran the ball 14 times and gained just 11 yards. It was the lowest rushing total allowed in the entire NFL. The biggest play in crunch time came courtesy of Brian Cox. Third down and long from the 35 back to the little Johnson. Yes, hit from the yes. The Bears have it. So does John Mangum. They're still unraveling the yes. ball. It's Chicago football. Brian Cox. The following week against Tampa Bay, the Bears saddled up Raymond Harris. Raymond ripped through the Buck defense, ripped off 118 yards, and rammed in the game securing touchdown. And again, Raymond into the middle of the line. But once again, center stage belonged to the defense, which tossed a second half shutout. The Bears' fighting spirit had them on the playoff path despite a mountain of injuries until they climbed up the Rockies to take on the sky high Broncos. Conway and Ingram. Backs a split break, short drop, lost the right side of the end zone. Conway reaching for it. Chicago dominated statistically, but in the end, 
They died hard. Ball game on the line. Fourth down and goal to go from the four. Craig Hoff flies the right side of the end zone and it's tipped away and nearly intercepted. Broke it up incomplete. Denver Broncos have held on to win. On the road again in Kansas City, the Bears were leading. Up the middle, Raymond Harris to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone, touchdown! But in the second half, they lost another heartbreaker, 14 to 10. Postseason hopes were dashed, but Dave Wanstead reminded them of one thing. It's not how you start the season, it's how you finish it. Man, coverage, I was going to do the thing. Right. If, if he's inside, you're just going to go slant corner, right? Huh? You're just going to kind of go in and then go back to your corner? No, I'm the inside guy. Oh. It took a while for the ever-changing starting offense to gel. But the men up front stayed together and stayed the course. Jerry Fontenot, Todd Berger, and Chris Valerio helped allow the second fewest sacks per pass attempt. And despite not knowing who'd carry the ball each week, James Big Cat Williams, Iron Man Andy Heck, and Todd Perry paved the way for whomever it happened to be. Three different backs ran behind them for 100-yard games. Robert Green turned the trick first in Washington in week two. Rashan Salam totaled 115 against the Rams in week 15. And in between, leading rusher Raymond Harris hit the century mark three times. The dirty work was welcomed by fullback Tony Carter. Carter was the lead blocker and leading receiver out of the backfield, while Mike Falkerson scored his first Bear touchdown. With the loss of Keith Jennings, the Bears were forced to start rookie Bobby Neely, number 87, as the Bears settled for only one touchdown from the position. Ryan Wet Nights in the home finale. Questions at tight end made Michael Timpson a bare necessity. His 62 catches were second only to Curtis Conway, who became the first Bear receiver ever to achieve consecutive 1,000 yard season. Where Conway is, rookie Bobby Ingram hopes to go. Ingram was brought along slowly, but he quickly found the end zone. Of his 33 catches, six went for scores. Ingram and Conway. Together they combined for 13 touchdowns and many more magic moments. Down the stretch to give their season meaning, the Bears set their sights on sweeping their last three home games. Gotta expect the win, fellas. Expect the win, but let's go. First up were the Lions. To the right side, low wide receiver to the left. That's Raymond Harris. Blitz is on. Craig back to throw. He wings it over the middle. Yes. Curtis Conway. Trying to left slot. That's short. Sure. the Bears. Ingram and Conway form a slot to the right. They flood the right. Reggie Brown coming with a blitz along with Benny Blaze. Craig takes, hands it off, Raymond up the middle, throws his way to the goal line, touchdown! Craig, for the Bears, for the Bears! Chicago scored 31 and drilled Detroit. Then came home again and put up 35 on the Rams. To the right side. And Craig, short drop, pumps left one. Now, here's it out to Conway, left side of the end zone. After a 27-yard strike to the California Comet, the special team streaked downfield and the route was on. He gets his kick away. High kick. Oh. And he's blocked. He's hit by the Rams. It's up to Greg in the end zone. It's covered by the Bears. And that's going to be. You got to see that touchdown, Mike. Ain't nobody touchdown. Touchdown, Bears.
They saved their best for last. And in doing so, brought out the best in themselves. It is how you finish the season that counts. And the Bears wrapped up 1996 in style by crushing the Chargers in the home finale. By year's end, everyone shared in a newfound spirit that, though tested at times, was never lost. It's precisely that spirit that replenishes the NFL's most tradition-rich team. Sometimes the orange was burnt and the navy was blue, but they showed their true colors by fighting to the finish. And now the city on whose broad shoulders the team is always carried looks toward a bright future. President Michael McCaskey and Dave Wanstead have already begun the work of retooling and refueling the Bears. The first priority was the search for a new offensive coordinator. They found their man in Matt Cavanaugh. After a 14-year playing career, he entered the coaching ranks and refined his approach out in San Francisco. As the Niners quarterback coach, Cavanaugh polished future Hall of Famer Steve Young. Now he'll work with another Bear newcomer, Rick Meyer. The former Seahawk quarterback returns home where he once starred for the Irish down the road in South Bend. Meyer will work with the Bear staff to maximize his mobility and energize the running of the Bears' blend of the power run and the West Coast passing game. Meyer brings a new look to a team that has always thrived on old virtues. For 77 years, they played the game the way it was meant to be, winning nine world championships along the way. In 1996, Chicago reasserted its home field advantage by going 6-2 and two at Soldier Field. Now they look to the challenges ahead in their history-making 600th team victory. Supported by the die-hard spirit of their die-hard fans, the pride and joy of Illinois will renew the fight once more. New Edge Pro Gel presents the Chicago Bears Ultimate Performance of 1996. The Chicago Bears showed the defending Super Bowl champions a thing or two in a week one Monday night massacre. Scoring on this trick play as wide receiver Curtis Conway found fullback Raymond Harris for six. The Chicago defense did it the old fashioned way, out muscling the Cowboys and capitalizing on a Kevin Minifield sack and a Brian Cox fumble recovery. Hey, Bear lineup program, names and numbers. Hey, program and lineup. Hey, game day lineup program. Now, we're going to go out of the eye so that the fullback's got a better job of sorting that thing out. Let's go. We're going right back there. We got a fight. We're doing fine. Let's go. We got three and out coming up, fellas. Three and out. Let's go now. Let's go. Let's go. I need stop. I need stop. Good throw, good throw. 